urethritis, cervicitis, epididymitis, uh, conjunctivitis, reactive arthritis, and PID. Right. So PID is known for uh, ectopic pregnancy. Uh, so they might ask you for a history in a patient who has ectopic pregnancy. So she might have gotten chlamydia or gonorrhea, or that the medication wasn't completed. Like she didn't take all of her medication or something like that, incomplete treatment kind of thing. So these are the chlamydia trachomatis uh, from D to K. Okay. Uh, condyloma condylomata acuminata, that's genital warts. Uh, so that's these things right there. And coilocytes. So coilocytes are important uh, of course, because they tell you that it's HPV, but also in the presence of HP, uh, coilocytes are also significant for cervical cancer. So you'll find that in or there will be increased chances of that in this because it's a precursor for cervical cancer, right? So. Okay, so now we have herpes gen uh, genital or genitalis, a painful penile valvular vulvar or cervical vesicles and ulcers. So those things are there. Uh, can cause systemic symptoms uh, such as fever, headache and myalgia. HSV2, less commonly HSV1, because we just read a line that said HSV1 and 2, they can both cause both uh, facial and genital uh, lesions, right? But I think uh, for step, they're still gonna just keep it separate. So it's gonna be HSV2 for the genitals and uh, HSV1 for the facial ones. But don't quote me on that. Uh, gonorrhea, urethritis, cervicitis, um, PID, prostatitis, epididymitis, arthritis, creamy purulent discharge. That's the main one. This and this is usually how you figure out is gonorrhea. But then they also give you like uh, septic arthritis or, you know, uh, cocaine pair, gram negative, all of that stuff too. Then you have this. Okay, so granuloma uh, inguinale or donovanosis. This is a important one. You need to know this because they ask you to differentiate. Like the way they question it, uh, you had to differentiate between uh, cancroid, uh, this, and syphilis right and probably one or two more things but yeah okay so granuloma inguinale uh, donovanosis it's painless beefy red ulcer that bleeds readily readily on contact uh, it's uncommon in u.s and it's because of klebsiella granulomatis it's cytoplasmic donovan uh bodies bipolar staining seen on microscopy so that's this thing right here it the main thing is that it, the ulcer bleeds when you touch it right uh, then you have hepatitis B uh, jaundice it's because of hepatitis B uh, then you have lympho granuloma venarium that's infection of lymphatics, painless genital ulcers, but painful lymphadenopathy. Yeah, so this is the one uh, you, that causes buboes, sorry, not this one. It's the A2, uh, sorry, L1, 2, 3. L1, L2, and L3 that causes buboes. Okay, so that thing right there. 
and this is going to be painful uh, lymph node but painless ulcer so that's how we remember that I should just do that ulcer is painless lymph node is painful that's not gonna help is it yeah that's not gonna help us uh, primary syphilis is painless canker yeah so okay I didn't have to write that that was painless is it? me embarrassing with my spelling skills Uh, primary syphilis, uh, painless uh, canker. So F right there. Uh, then you have uh, secondary syphilis. That's going to be your fever, lymphadenopathy, skin rashes, sec condyloma, a lot of. Um, the skin rashes is on palms and sole, right? So that's how you were differentiating it when we're doing it. This one's gonna be painless, it's gonna be single. And this one, you're gonna have it on palms and sole. That's the defining feature for this. And then if you get CNS symptoms like uh, Argyle Robertson pupil or general periesis uh, or even Tavis dorsalis, it's gonna be tertiary syphilis. Right? And then also aortitis and gummas, but this would be too obvious. So they might, might not. Uh, and this is done by trepanoma pallidum and then you have trichomoniasis uh, that's vaginitis or cervic uh, strawberry cervix uh, they're motile and wet white uh, wet prep sorry uh, and trichomonas vaginalis is the cause of that uh, it happens in when the pH is more than 4.5 And you give metronidazole and treat the partner. You have yellow green uh, and frothy discharge and false one discharge. Okay. Uh, torch. These are important. So, uh, why? Uh, torch. Uh, microbes that may pass from mother to fetus. Uh, transmission is transplacental in most cases or via vaginal delivery, especially herpes simplex virus 2. Okay, so herpes is, uh, which happens during the delivery. Uh, Non-specific signs common to many torches infection include hepatosplenomegaly, uh, jaundice, thrombocytopenia, and growth restriction. Hepatosplenomegaly, uh, jaundice, thrombocytopenia. And growth restriction. If you have any of these, you can assume that is because of porch infection. So, okay. Other important infections, uh, infectious agents uh, include strep, uh, agalacti, or group B streptococci, E. coli, and Listeria meningitis. Uh, sorry, Listeria monocytogenes, and these are the ones that cause meningitis, right? So all cause of meningitis and newborn babies. Pyrovirus B19 causes hydrophytalis. Pyrovirus is the slap cheek one. Or fifth disease or infanticiosum. All of these stuff is because of this. Okay, so TORCH. Uh, the TO stands for Toxoplasma gondii, R for rubella. That's from... Uh, Metona virus, right? Metona virus. Uh, cytomegalovirus, CMV. Uh, and then that's a herpes virus. Then you have HIV. And then you have herpes simplex 2 as well. And that happens because of vaginal delivery and syphilis. Okay. So, Toxoplasma gondii, uh, it happens from cat feces or ingestion of undercooked meat. 
right? You're gonna remember cat feces, but you're not gonna remember this one. But remember this one, because that's the one they're gonna test you on you. Test the, on you. Test you on, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so the question is going to be like that the person has uh, a new cat and she's pregnant and she was scratched by it and then she had ring lesions in the head how did it get to her right so contaminated food or was it uh, because of the cat or uh, was it because of something else uh, something else and something else so it doesn't happen because of cat scratch it's because of cat feces right so you can't pick, pick uh, cat scratch and also cat scratch causes what bartonella not toxoplasma gondii right so you gotta pick the undercooked meat or contaminated food as the answer uh, maternal manifestation usually asymptomatic lymphadenopathy rarely neonatal manifestation classic triad uh, chorea retinitis uh, hydrocephalus and intracranial calcification with or without blueberry muffin rash right so if you remember my diagram for this was So it was like a Gandhi. Uh, the Gandhi had um, big head. So that's for hydrocephalus. Okay, so we got that. The eyes. So that's chorio retinitis. Uh, we have the sunspots, which are intracranial calcification. And we have the glasses for uh, ring enhancing lesions in the brain. and usually asymptomatic lymphadenopathy rarely. It could have or could not have blueberry muffin. It doesn't matter. When they give you these three, you should know what it is. Even if they give you just hydrocephalus, this is the only one that has it. None, none of the other ones have it. Because cordioretinitis, it happens in other stuff too. Uh, like right here, blueberry muffin rash happens here as well. But none of the other ones have hydrocephalus. Also, they will mention, uh, like, almost always, that there's ring-enhancing lesion in the brain. Or just might give you a brain scan for that. Okay. So, for rubella, it's I love ruby earrings. Uh, before we get there, uh, how does it get from mother to uh, the fetus or newborn? It's going to be respiratory droplets. Uh the mother gets it from, uh, gets what from it? Rash, lymphadenopathy, polyarthritis, and polyarthralgia. Sorry. Uh, okay. And neonatal manifestations are going to be these uh, abnormalities of eye. So that's cat cataracts, uh, ear. So that's deafness and congenital heart diseases, PDA. So the mnemonic is eye, heart, ruby, earrings. So that's your cataract, that's your PDA, that's your rubella, and that's your ear deafness or the eighth nerve deafness. Okay. Uh, cytomegalovirus. So when do you think about these? Uh, compared to the other it's when it's a newborn or infant and they're saying that uh, the on physical examination the newborn had uh, you know white lens or something for cataract or it didn't respond to sound for years and uh, there's like a, some kind of murmur in the heart for PDA uh, for cytomegalovirus, uh, sexual contact, organ transplant. That's how the mother gets it. Uh, also, 
she would have the uh, usually asymptomatic mononucleosis like illness right but it's going to be monospot negative because the positive ones is EB virus or Epstein Barr virus that's the mono uh, then you have neonatal manifestation that's hearing loss seizures potential rash and blue berry muffin okay so CMV this is what it is this is what's going to give it away what paraventricular uh, okay. I'm rushing potential rash blueberry muffin rash chorioretinitis remember that's why you call it cytomegalovirus cyto because of the chorioretinitis it also has hearing loss but so does this one seizures so does this one uh, no not this one sorry uh, this one would uh, potential rash and blueberry muffin this one this one as well so the defining feature here would be this periventricular calcification so this is the ventricle and then you see uh, opacity around it okay so that's what it looks like and it doesn't have to be continuous there could be some over here some here some here some here right that's the periventricular calcification then you have HIV okay so that's the cataract sorry we didn't look at that one so white lens or there's a pigment in the lens something like that okay. HIV sexual contact nail stick uh, the manifestation is going to be variable presentation depending on where the CD count is because we went over that and recurrent infection chronic diarrhea uh, herpes simplex virus 2 skin or mucous membrane contact usually for this one yeah so usually asymptomatic herpetic vesicular lesions uh, yeah, you're going to have like a cold sore or something for this one. And meningoencephalitis, herpetic vascular, vascular lesion. Okay. Uh, they don't test you on this one for torch. If they do, it's going to be the one from uh, for the adults or up there. Uh, and they're going to question and test you your knowledge on between, like basically between herpes 1 and 2. And maybe three um, but for torch it's majority of the time it's between these three and this one is too easy so if they give you that you should get that one okay so skin uh, that's done syphilis sexual contact canker primary and disseminated rash are the two stages likely to result in fetal in infection Uh, why is it obvious or easy to get that is syphilis there's often res it results in stillbirth either that or eye drops uh, fetalis but if they survive they present with facial abnormalities which is notched teeth settled nose and short maxilla right so this one they're going to say that there is an indentation in the teeth in the middle so if you don't know what that looks like it's it's pretty obvious that it's from syphilis like that so that's what that looks like Nasty. This, one. this feels like it was done on purpose but yeah right there no wait, that's a different one it's going to be this one with indentation in the middle and uh, they have cell nose 
and short maxilla short maxilla they might or might not give you Saber shins. So that is that right there. And the eighth nerve deafness. So this one has deafness, this one has deafness, this one has deafness. So you're gonna have to differentiate between these three. But for this one, they give you this. So that would be the buzzword. So easy to find, figure out from there. Also, another thing they uh, asked, which was weird, was the umbilical one I was talking about. That the, when they delivered the baby, the umbilical cord was necros at some bits or in parts and that necrosis was due to uh, syphilis so yeah just a heads up uh, PID or pelvic inflammatory disease top bugs chlamydia trichomatis uh, subacute often undiagnosed and nazaria gonorrhea acute C trichomatis most common bacterial STI in the United States uh, this is the one that causes bubbles, L1, L2, and L3. Uh, sign includes cervical motion tenderness, adenal, adenexal tenderness, and truelent cervical discharge. Um, PID may include self-angitis, uh, endometritis, hydrocelphings, and tubo ovarian abscess. Self-angitis is a risk factor for ectopic pregnancy uh, that's the one that they test you on uh, okay so infertility chronic pelvic pain and adhesions the adhesions are known as Fuchs huge curtis syndrome right uh, can lead to perihepatitis uh, Fuchs huge curtis syndrome you remember because this was a while in string player or bass player or whatever not bass but like you know that huge one i'm not sure what that instrument is called but it's a huge one with it's kind of like sitar <laughs> but in a violin form so huge violin so the strings attach from up there which is the peritoneum to down here which is like the liver so that's how you remember that Infection and inflammation of liver capsule and violent string adhesions of peritoneum to liver. So this is what it's like. That's a pretty good picture. I think that's the first time I've seen it. Uh, healthcare associated infections E. coli UTI and SREs wound infection are the most two most common causes for healthcare associated infections this one is horrible because of MRSA uh, and also if you have CGD that's really bad for you uh, okay so risk factor pathogen and unique signs and symptoms so risk factor antibiotic use pathogen c difficile uh, water diarrhea leukocytosis it can happen in old age home or uh, hospitals it won't happen anywhere else like daycare or something like that Aspira uh, aspiration or secondary to altered mental status or old age uh, you'll get polymicrobial gram-negative bacteria often anaerobes right lower lobe in infiltrate or right upper middle lobe patient recombinant purulent malodorous sputum 
uh, decubitus, ulcer, surgical wounds, drains, uh, S. aureus, including MRSA, gram negative anaerobes, bacteroids, Prevotella, Fusobacterium, uh, erythema, tenderness, and duration, drainage from surgical wound sites. Intravascular catheters, S. aureus, including MRSA, S. epidermidis, long term. Erythema in duration, tenderness, drainage from access sites. Mechanical ventilation, endotracheal intubation, late onset, P. arginosa, Klebsiella, Actinobacter, and S. aureus. Uh, know about this one. So, in mechanical ventilation or endotracheal intubation, you're more than uh, often likely to get infected by Pseudomonas rather than S. aureus. Uh, new infiltrate on chest x-ray and increased spittin production, sweet odor. Sweet odor again, uh, that's pseudomonas. Uh, renal dialysis uh, unit and needle stick, uh, hepatitis B and C. Urinary catheterization. Also, uh, this one, unless they give you uh, total they don't give you anything then it's going to be this but more than likely it's going to be this for long term right uh, so remember that one this one decubus ulcer this you don't have to worry about that one don't need, I already went over this like a million times so I just want to do that for your sake uh, antibiotic USC death, so went over that a lot of times as well uh, Okay, so urinary catheterization, this is the important one. Uh, protease, E. coli, and Klebsiella, most of the time it's going to be E. coli. It's going to be in an old patient uh, who has had a urinary catheter for more than seven days. Right. And the best way to prevent that is as soon as you don't need it, you take it out. That's the best way to prevent infection. Uh, dysuria leukocytosis so if you have leukocytosis uh, you can think of UTI uh, flank pain or costovertebral angle tenderness uh, this just means uh, this is usually given for something to do with kidney right so it could be pyelonephritis uh, but it's also used in this wording is used in uh, stones as well kidney stones But in kidney stones, you will start having like other stuff as well, like bleeding and stuff. Uh, so here's just WBC. Uh, water aerosols, Legionella, right? It's sign, signs of pneumonia, GI symptoms, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, neurologic abnormalities, all that stuff. You don't need to know as long as they say that they're working in water treatment plant or working as a maintenance for ACs or close AC as a closed system or they're on cruise ship all of these buzzwords for Legionella also it doesn't stain but it stains under silver stain so Legionella for that uh, bugs affecting unvaccinated children uh, clinical presentation finding labs and pathogen Dermatologic rash beginning at the head and moving down with post auricular lymphadenopathy. Even without looking, you should know that it's rubella because they give you post auricular lymphadenopathy. But just to go over it, let me just draw. color since I'm Indian I'll pick up this for some reason that's or that looks like brown so dude's brown now it's just the way it is nothing can be done Thank you.
No, where'd it go? Yeah. Do it with a big head. Uh. Okay, so rash. So it beginning at the head and moving down with uh, post auricular lymphadenopathy. Right, so that's rubella. If it's beginning at the head and moving down, just like this one, it proceeds by cough, coryza, conjunctivitis, and copic spot. You should know that's measles by now. Right, so they both do the same thing right? head and then downwards. Uh, neurologic. I'll just name for that. That was pointless. So. But I like him now. I'm attached to this dude. Meningitis micro colonizes nasopharynx. H influenza type B can also lead to myalgia and paralysis. So polio virus. Uh, tetanus, muscle spasm, and spastic paralysis. For example, lockjaw or obstetritis. That's going to be because of uh, tetany or clustering in tetany. Okay. Myalgia and paralysis, polyvirus again. Uh, and microcolonies and nerve That's this. So, meningitis because of something from nose is going to be H influenza type B. Meningitis because there's a along associated with the um, algae and paralysis that's polio and if it's for tetan uh, tetanus only one thing does that so that should not be that hard uh, it might get hard if you're trying to figure out if this kind of spastic paralysis is between this and chikungunya because it's similar but their clinical presentation is way different so it shouldn't be that hard uh, respiratory uh, epiglottitis, fever with dysphagia, drooling, and difficulty breathing due to edema. Uh, again, the person will be in tripod position, right? So it happens with H, H influenza type B, also capable of causing epiglottitis and fully immunized children. So if you don't know what I mean by tripod position, That's like this. Okay. They're gonna sit like this. Uh, they're gonna lean forward, tripod position, and they will drool. There is drooling in that as well. And he'll look toxic just from the appearance of the child. So fever with dysphagia, drooling, and difficulty breathing due to edema. Okay. Uh, pertussis, this is your whooping cough. So low grade fever with coryza leads to whooping cough, post vomiting, and gradual recovery. Bordetella pertussis, uh, pharyngitis, uh, that's grayish pseudomembranes, may obstruct our airways, coronary bacterium diphtheria. Okay, so if there is pseudomembrane in the throat anywhere, it can only be two of uh, three things, right? It could be candida or it can be this uh, coronary bacterium diphtheria. Uh, the other one, the pseudomembrane, right? So the other one is C. episode that makes pseudomembrane, it's, but it's in the uh, the intestine not the throat the other one I think it was which one was it that caused leukoplakia there was one that causes leukoplakia and I can't recall it right now anyways This one, EBV. Okay. We 
almost done. Cool, cool, cool. There's the dude. Okay, rubella and meningitis. Respire T, epicolactus, uh, pertussis. Pertussis is uh, whooping cough, post vomiting. So after the cough, they feel like they need to vomit or emesis also. Right, same thing. Uh, and then they have gradual recovery. In adults, it causes 100D cough, um, bordetella pertussis. Um, the vaccine, we have a vaccine for this, uh, and we con it's conjugated with uh, tetanus and diphtheria. So it's called DTAP or TAP-D. Uh, then pharyngitis, grayish pseudomembrane, coronary bacteria and diphtheria. Okay, we're on to drugs now and that's I think 10 pages of that so let's take a break here since before we start okay so we're gonna do the drugs now microbiology antimicrobials Okay. So penicillin G and V, or five, I guess. I don't know. Uh, v. Uh, penicillin G uh, is IV and IM form, so intravascular or intramuscular form. Uh, penicillin V is for oral. Prototype beta lactam antibiotics. The mechanism is. DLA DLA uh, need to know the structure. Uh, DLA DLA structural analog bind penicillin binding proteins, transpeptidase, block transpeptidase cross linking of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. Right, so that's where this one attacks or attacks right in the peptidoglycan cell wall, and uh, it binds to penicillin binding proteins. These proteins are found in the cell wall when we did the anatomy of a bacteria in the beginning. Okay, so activates autolytic enzymes. That's how it uh, does that. So when this happens, it destroys the cell, right? Uh, clinical use. Mostly used for gram-positive organisms as pneumonia, as pyogenes, and actinomyces. Also used for gram-negative cocci, mainly in meningitis and spirochetes. Mainly T. pallidum. Uh, that's what uh, it's used for. So mostly used for gram-positive. So streptococcus pneumoniae, and streptococcus pyogenes, and actinomyces. Uh, but it's also used for gram-negative cocci, mainly for uh, N. meningitis and spirochetes. That's your syphilis one, T. pallidum. Uh, bactericidal for uh, gram-positive cocci and gram-positive rods. Uh, that's your bacillus and clostridium, sorry, clostridium and all that stuff. Uh, gram-negative cocci and spirochetes. These are beta lectomies sensitive, right? So we give them uh, in a combination with something else as well so uh, that one will take care of this adverse effects are hypersensitivity reaction direct Coombs positive hemolytic anemia and drug induced interstitial nephritis uh, resistance is beta lectomies cleaves the beta lectum ring so mutation in uh, also mutations in uh, penicillin binding proteins okay so you need to know where it binds what it does and what the structure is so it's DLA DLA structure okay. um, penicillinase sensitive penicillins amoxicillin ampicillin and amino penicillins um, mechanism same as penicillin virus spectrum Penicillin A is sensitive, also combined with clavulinate acid, right? Uh, also known as augmentin, uh, that's what we give. So, 
amox and clavulinate acid to protect against uh, destruction by beta lactamase. Amino penicillins are amped up penicillin. Amoxicillin has a greater oral bioavailability than ampicillin. Clinical use extended spectrum penicillin, H influenza, H pylori, E. coli, enterococci, Listeria, monocytes, cytogens, um, Proteus mirabilis, Salmonella, Shigella. Coverage ampicillin, amoxicillin helps kill enterococci. So these are your enterococci. Okay. H influenza, H pylori, E. coli, enterococci, Listeria, Proteus, and Salmonella, Shigella. Adverse effect is hypersensitive reaction. That's going to be for all of them. Uh, rash and pneumo, I mean pseudomembranous colitis. Uh, mechanism of resistance is this penicillinase, a type of beta lactamase, cleaves the beta lactam ring. Okay, you need to know the mechanism of resistance for each of them. For this one, was same thing, and also mutation in penicillin binding proteins. This one is just that. Uh, so penicillinase resistant penicillins are diacloxacycline, and nephicillin, and oxacillin. Mechanism is, mechanism is same as penicillin. It binds to the uh, cell wall peptidoglycans. So transmitted across linking from peptidoglycans. Uh, Same as penicillin. Narrow spectrum penicillinase resistant because bulky R group blocks access of beta lactamase to beta lactam ring. Uh, clinical use is as aureus except for MRSA. Uh, we use NAF for staph. Right, so nafcillin is one of the big ones. Uh, anything you can use for MRSA uh, is a big drug. Adverse effect is hypersensitivity reaction, interstitial nephritis. Uh, this is going to be uh, in all the penicillins as well. Um, mechanism of resistance is MRSA has altered penicillin binding protein target size. Uh, then you have piperacillin for pseudomonas. This is what it's known for. Because you imagine uh, Mona Lisa smoking a pipe. So that's how I remember that. Anti pseudomonal uh, penicillin. Mechanism same as penicillin extended spectrum penicillin is sensitive use with beta lactamase inhibitor uh, Clinical use is pseudomonas species and gram negative rods adverse effects hypersensitivity reactions right. So that was this stuff now we're gonna do cephalosporins for cephalosporins uh, beta lactam drugs that inhibit cell wall synthesis but are less susceptible to penicillinase so and they are bactericidal organisms typically not covered by first to fourth generation cephalosporins are rain so listeria atypicals chlamydia and mycoplasma MRSA and enterococci So for these, you're not going to give cephalosporins. Okay. Uh, clinical use, first generation, cephazoline and cephalexin, gram positive, uh, cocci, proteus mirabilis, E. coli, klebsiella pneumonia, cephazoline used prior to surgery to prevent S. aureus wound infection. Right. So there are mnemonics for this. Uh, so for this one, you focus on the the as and heal, and this thing is. First thing you do when you get on a plane 
is is you ask do you has any ginger ale right so ale so the first one has as an ale in it and that's how you remember cephazoline and cephalexine okay so first generation uh, gram positive and protease e coli and klebsiella so pec protease e coli and klebsiella that's what it works on for the second one I guess that works too but there's also this if you want to box for or pro tannin right so tanning you can just spell it with T -E. well, it has tan in it so that looks like that one. so fox is for cefoxetine uh, fur is for cefuroxine uh, four is for something and pro is for cefoprozil okay cefprozil so there is a drug called cefprozil so that's for that it used to be in the old book but not the new one and then it's uh cefotetan cefotetan or whatever so this is your second generation uh it's positive for uh, PEC as well as HENS right so you have your PEC which is Protease E. coli uh, Klebsiella but HENS PEC right so HENS are age influenza enterovector arginine genes and nazaria and cerecia right for the third one uh, third one is the most popular one so you probably know them already For that, the uh, mnemonic is try to fix it. So, first you do, first you do. So there were three Tasmanian devils in a pod. So that covers at least four of them. So try to do your taxes. And then you have three Tasmanian in a pod and fix right so try to fix it by doing taxes in third month and this is completely unrelated so three Tasmanian devils in a pod pod is usually three people in it or three peas in a pod right it can cross blood brain barrier so ceftriaxone is used for meningitis uh, also gonorrhea and disseminated Lyme's disease uh, ceftazidine is pseudo uh, so used for pseudomonas that's the only one right okay so Tasmanian you need the Tasmanian devils for uh, Mona Lisa okay then the fourth one 
it's just fe in it so if you have fe i just think that you know iron takes up four spots in a hemoglobin so that's how i remember that one i'll still write it out though So Fe is iron and it takes up four spots in hemoglobin. So cefepime, gram-negative organism with increased activity against pseudomonas and gram-positive organisms. Uh, fifth generation is Uh This one looks like a tyro and it's like a, what it means is a star in my language. A star has five points so it's fifth generation brought uh, so that won't help you but yeah just think of something like that also yeah, Seth if you could just pronounce it just as slightly uh, with some kind of accent will sound like a s star or mean, you know, so I guess that works too. So that works, and star has four point, I mean five points, so fifth generation is Steph Darlene. Uh, broad gram positive and gram negative organism coverage, unlike first uh, one, two, four generation uh, cephalosporins. Ceftarlene covers MRSA, so that's why it's a big one. And Enterococcus faecalis uh, does not cover Pseudomonas though. Pseudomonas is only Cephepine and Ceftazidine because you bring in the Tasman devils for Mona Lisa. Okay. Adverse effects hypersensitive reaction so just remember it this one at least if you can't remember any other ones for first generation it's uh gram positive peck and the second generation is gram positive hence peck and it doesn't work for these uh, the lames on uh, the stereo atypical is MRSA and enterococci but it works for pseudomonas which is uh, tasmine uh, Tasmanian devil for pseudomonas and also cephepine for that and gram positive. Okay. Uh, adverse effect again, hypersensitive reaction for everything. Uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, disulfiram like reaction, uh, vitamin K deficiency, lowering of cross reactive even in penicillin allergic patients, increased nephrotoxicity of aminoglycosides. And mechanism of action is inactivated. So right there. So the mechanism of action is inactivated by cephalosporinase. Uh, oh, sorry. This is resistance. Okay. So by that, a type of beta lactamase. A structural change in penicillin binding proteins will also cause resistance. Um, beta-lactamase inhibitors. Uh, these are your clavulonic acid, evibactam, sulfobactam, and tazobactam. Often added to penicillin antibiotics to protect the antibiotic from destruction by beta-lactamase. Uh, CAST. So, for example, amoxicillin or with uh, clavulonate, also known as augmentin, ceftazidine and evibactam, ampicillin, sulfobactam, Pepericillin and Tezobactin. Augmentin in India, uh, not in, over here. Uh, now, Carbapenem.
Uh, that's Dory Penum, Amy Penum, Meryl Penum, and Erta Penum. Let's bring that back then. Okay. So that's this one right here. Also attacks the cell wall. Um, mechanism. Amipenem is a broad spectrum beta lactamase resistant uh, carbapenem. Binds penicillin binding proteins. Inhibition causing inhibition of cell wall synthesis, causing cell death. Uh, always administered with uh, celestin, inhibitor of renal dihydropeptidase 1, to decrease inactivation of drug in the renal tubules. So with imipenems, the kill is lasting with celastin. Uh, yeah, that works. And pens cost a dime. So dying for doripenem, imipenem, meropenem, and artipenem. Clinical use, uh, gram-positive coca and gram-negative rods and anaerobes. Wide spectrum and significant adverse effect limit use to left threatening infections or other after other drugs have failed. Meropenem has a decreased risk of seizures and is stable to dihydropeptidase. For a question for this, it would be like uh, this was given with some other drug, uh, which made the drug more effective or last more time or something like that, and then it would ask you about the last time. Uh, adverse effect, GI distress, rash, and CNS toxicity, seizures at high plasma level. Mechanism of resistance is inactivated by carbapenemase uh, produced by Klebsiella pneumoniae and E. coli and Enterococcus arginus, I guess. Uh, Estrionam mechanism is less susceptible to beta lectomies, prevents peptidoglycan cross linking by binding to pep penicillin binding proteins. Uh, synergistic with aminoglycosides, no cross allergenicity with penicillins. Clinical use is gram negative rods only. No activity against gram positive rods or anaerobes for penicillin allergic patients and those with renal insufficiency with, can, with whom cannot tolerate aminoglycosides. Uh, adverse effect usually non toxic and occasional GI upset. Okay, so that was one of Spectrum as well. Okay, so that covers that. Now we're on to vancomycin. Uh, it inhibits the cell wall. Right, so that's this one right here. Peptidoglycan synthesis, glycopeptide, vancomycin, and bactericin. Bacitracin. Bacitracin. Was in sensitive was group A streptococcus was it okay I can't recall it but that's okay uh, okay so it inhibits cell wall peptidoglycan formation by binding to DLA DLA portion of cell wall precursor bacterial against settle against most bacteria Bacteriostatic against C. difficile, not susceptible to beta lactamases. Uh, clinical use is gram positive bugs only for serious multi drug resistant organisms because it's one of the big ones, uh, including MRSA, S. epidermidis sensitive enterococcus species, and Clostridium difficile. Or, uh, adverse effect. Well tarred in general, but not totally free. So, nephrotoxicity, uh, autotoxicity, and thrombophlebitis diffuse flushing. Vancomycin infusion reaction. Idiopathic reaction largely preventable by pre treatment with antihistamines. Dress syndrome. Mechanism of resistance occur in bacteria. Uh, Enterococcus via amino acid. Modification of DLA DLA to DLA DLAC. 
that's how the resistance works for this one if you lack a diala uh, or dollar uh, you can't ride the van uh, for rank master okay uh, protein synthesis inhibitors are aminoglycosides linozolid tetracycline and chloramphenicol and macrolides and clindamycin okay so let's move this out of the way and before we do that just so you know where it is that's aminoglycoside and tetracycline and this um, binding to 30s whereas these ones macrolides and streptogramins and chloramphenicol, clindamycin, and linozolid bind to 50s. Specifically, target smaller bacterial ribosome 70s made of 30s and 50s subunits, leaving human ribosome 80s unaffected. So we have ADS, that's why this is safe to use because it only attacks the bacterial ribosomes which are 70s made of 30s and 50s. Okay, uh, all are bacteriostatic except for aminoglycosides which is bacteriocidal and linozolid which is variable. 30s inhibitors are at or aminoglycosides tetracyclines and 50s inhibitors are Chloramphenicol, clindamycin, erythromycin, which is a macrolide, and linozolid. So buy at 30 and sell at 50. So got to remember the mechanism of action. Uh, at aminoglycoside, tetracycline for 30 s and sell, which is clindamycin, and Chloramphenicol, erythromycin, and linozolid at 50 years. Okay, aminoglycosides. Uh, gentamicin, uh, neomycin, amicacin, tobramycin, and streptomycin. Mean amino glycosides or mean NADS cannot kill anaerobes. NADS is for G, uh, gentamicin, neomycin, amicacin, tobramycin, and streptomycin. Okay. Mechanism is bactericidal irreversible inhibition of irreversible inhibition of initiation complex through binding of the 30S subunit can cause misreading of mRNA. Also blocks translocation, require O2 for uptake, therefore ineffective against anaerobes. Right, this is the main thing. This is why you can't give it in uh, anaerobes, because it requires O2 for penetrating the cell wall. So if they don't have that, they're not going to be effective. Okay. So clinical wall, severe gram-negative rod infections. Uh, synergistic with uh, beta lactam antibiotics, neomycin for bowel surgery. Okay, uh, adverse effect is nephrotoxicity. Uh, the main one here is autotoxicity, especially with loop diuretics but also know that it's nephrotoxic and neuromuscular blockade. Uh, so absolute contraindication with myasthenia gravis. And autotoxicity and te teratogenicity. Right? So it's, don't give it in a pregnant lady. Um, mecha mechanism of resistance is vector transferase enzymes inactivate the drug by Acetylation, phosphorylation, and ethylation. Uh, then we have at 30, by at 30, so tetracycline, doxycycline, and minocycline. Uh, mechanism is bacteriostatic, binds to 30S, and prevents attachment of aminocyl tRNA. Uh, 
limited CNS penetration. Doxycycline is fecally eliminated and can be used in patients with renal failure. Do not take tetracycline with milk because uh, or antacids or iron containing preparations because divalent cations inhibit drugs absorption in the gut. So when you're giving or prescribing tetracycline, tell them not to take it with milk or antacids antacids and uh, iron containing preparations. Okay. Um, clinical use is Borrelia, uh, M pneumonia, mycoplasma pneumonia. Drugs ability to accumulate uh, intracellularly makes them very effective against rickettsia and chlamydia. Also used to treat acne. Doxycycline effective against community acquired MRSA. Uh, adverse effects. And GI distress, discoloration of teeth, and inhibition of bone growth in children, photosensitivity, teratocycline or teratogenic. Generally avoided in pregnancy and in children except for doxycycline. Mechanism of resistance, decrease in uptake and, and or increase in efflux out of bacterial cell by plasmid encoded transport pumps so if it gets uh, you know kicked out or it doesn't get any entry into the cell uh, tigacycline is uh, mechanism is it's a tetracycline derivative so it binds to 30s and inhibiting protein synthesis so that should be easy to remember and generally bacteriostatic uh, clinical use is broad spectrum and anaerobic, gram negative and gram positive coverage. Multi drug resistance organism, for example, MRSA and vancomycin resistant, uh, whatever that is, theory. Uh, and adverse effect is nausea and vomiting. Chloramphenicol. Yeah, so this is a big drug as well. So, uh, chloramphenicol it blocks peptidyl transferase at 50s ribosome subunit bacteriostatic clinical use is um, meningitis hm influenza and meningitis uh, streptococcus and pneumonia and rickett seal disease for example ro rocky mountain spotted fever so rickettsia rickettsii limited use due to toxicity but often still used in developing countries because of low cost. Adverse effects is anemia, dose dependent, aplastic anemia, dose independent, gray baby syndrome, for example, or uh, gray baby syndrome is in premature infants because they lack liver, UDP um, glucuronyl transferase. And mechanism resistance is plasmid encoded and style transferase inactivates the drug. So here you need to know about the gray baby syndrome and premature infants because they lack UDP glucuronide transferase. You need to know about the discoloration of teeth um, and tetracycline you can fill the teeth. Uh, clindamycin, uh, this one. So it blocks peptide transferase translocation at 50S sub ribosomal on um, 50S ribosomal subunit. Bacteriostatic. Clinical use is anaerobic infections, for example, bacterial species, Clostridium perfringens, and aspiration pneumonia. Lung abscess and oral infections, also effective against invasive group A streptococcal infection, treats anaerobic infections but above the diaphragm biases, uh, versus the metronasal dissolve, which is below the diaphragm, right? Anaerobic infections below. Uh, adverse effect is pseudomembranous colitis, C. difficile overgrowth, fever, and diarrhea. Linozolid, that's a big one because uh, it does for MRSA and vancomycin resistant drugs. Uh, BRE, uh, two. Okay. Mechanism 
in inhibits protein synthesis by binding to 50S subunit and preventing formation of the initiation complex. Okay, so that one right here. Um, clinical use is gram positive species, including MRSA and VRE. Uh, adverse effect is myelosuppression, especially thrombocytopenia, peripheral neuropathy, serotonin syndrome, due to partial MAO inhibition. Okay. And mechanism of resistance is point mutation of ribosomal RNA. Macrolide. Azithromycin, clarithromycin, uh, erythromycin. Mechanism is inhibit it inhibits. Okay, so macrolides are right there. Inhibits 50s uh, initiation protein. So, hold on, water break. So macrolide, azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin. Uh, mechanism, it inhibits protein synthesis by blocking translocation or macroslides. Bind to 23S rRNA on the 50S ribosomal subunit and it's bacteriostatic. Uh, clinical use, atypical pneumonia, mycoplasma, chlamydia, legionella, STI and chlamydia, gram positive cocci, uh, streptococcal infections in patients allergic to penicillin and um, bordetella pertussis, right? So adverse effects are macro. Uh, gastrointestinal motility issues. So this is the reason why we give uh, erythromycin a patient who has hard time uh, passing stool or something like that. Go learn about it in GIT. But just remember, this one is special because of it. We can give it to treat some kind of GIT issue because of its side effect. Um, gastrointestinal motility. Uh, uh, this one uh, stimulates motilin. That's why. Um, gastrointestinal motility issue. Arrhythmia caused by prolonged QT interval. Acute cholestatic hepatitis, rash, eosinophilia, increases serum concentration of theophylline, oral anticoagulants, clarithromycin and erythromycin inhibit cytochrome P450. Mechanism of resistance is methyl methylation of 23S rRNA binding site prevents binding of drugs or drug. Then we have polymyxins or cholestin which is polymyxin E or polymyxin B. <sighs> Sorry. No, I'm yawning too much, man. How much? How far does it go? It never ends. It's not ending, man. So, polymyxin cholestin, uh, polymyxin B. Mechanism is cation uh, polypeptides that bind to phospholipids on cell membrane on gram negative bacteria. Disrupts cell membrane integrity, which leads to leakage of cellular components and cell death. Clinical use is salvage therapy for multi drug resistant uh, gram negative bacteria. For example, Pseudomonas arginosa, E. coli and Klebsiella pneumoniae. Polymyxin B is a component of a triple antibiotic ointment used for superficial skin infection. This is why polymyxin B is very popular. It's used in, you will see it uh, in combination with any other uh, antibiotic ointment, right? So you'll, if you read the ingredients, you'll see this somewhere. 
uh, a component of triple antibiotic ointment used for superficial skin infection. Uh, adverse effects is nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity. For example, slurred speech, weakness, paresthesia, respiratory failure. Uh, mechanism is important for polymixin. So, one more time. Uh, cation polypeptides that bind to phospholipid on cell membrane gram negative of gram negative bacteria. Uh, it disrupts the cell membrane integrity. So that will cause the leakage of cellular components and lead to death. Okay, uh, sulfonamides, uh, sulfamethoxazole or SMX and sulfoxazole, sulfoxazole and sulfadiazine. So mechanism is it inhibits uh, dihydropterate synthase. So here we have it, like the green thing right there. Um, okay, so it inhibits uh, dihydropterate synthase, thus inhibiting folic synthesis. So power to THF to THF. Okay, so it inhibits the folic synthesis. It is bacteriostatic, bactericidal when combined with trimethorphan. Uh, clinical use is gram positive, gram negative, no cardia. Uh, TMP SMX for simple UTI. For UTI, this is what we give uh, as first line. Uh, adverse effects, uh, hypersensitivity, reaction, hemolysis if G6PD deficient and nephrotoxicity. Uh, tubulo interstitial nephritis, photosensitivity, Steven Johnson syndrome, pernicteris in infants, displace other drugs from albumin, for example, warfarin. Mechanism of resistance is uh, altered enzyme, bacterial dihydropterid synthase, or decrease in uptake or increase in PABA synthesis. So we have PABA and pteridine with dihydropteria uh, synthesis here, sulfonamides and dapsone inhibit this. And uh, with that, you get dihydropteric acid to dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid with purines and DNA RNA, with thymidine DNA, and methionine goes into protein. and trimethorphan pyrimethamine and also there was one more uh, uh, methotrexamine that also attacks you but that's uh that's not antibiotic so uh dapsone uh similar to sulfonamides but structurally distinct agent uh clinical use is leprosy lepromentis and tuberculoid Pneumocystis gerbachii, uh, prophylaxis or treatment when used in combination with TMP. Adverse effects are hemolysis if G6PD deficient, um, methemoglobinemia, and agranulocytosis. Uh, trimethorphan, it inhibits bacterial dihydrofolic reductase. It is bacteriostatic. Uh, clinical use is used in combination with sulfonamides uh, like trimethorphan sulfamethoxazole, so TMP SMX, uh, causing sequential block of folic synthesis. Uh, combination used for UTI Shigella salmonella, Pneumocystis gerovici, or Wiki. Gerovici. I like that. Uh, pneumonia treatment and prophylaxis and toxoplasmosis prophylaxis okay uh, adverse effects hyperleukemia hyperkalemia sorry uh, adverse effect is hyperkalemia hydrosis uh, megaloblastic anemia leukopenia granulocytopenia uh, which may be avoided with co-administration of leukovorin or folinic acid Uh, TMP treats marrow poorly. Okay. 
so TMP is over here and SMX is over here. Uh, fluoroquinolones. So these are your ciprofloxacin, enoxacin, norfloxacin, ofloxacin, and respiratory fluoroquinolones are um, gemfloxacin or levofloxacin or moxifloxacin. Mechanism of for all of these are it's going to attack the gyrus one. So it inhibits pro uh, prokaryotic enzyme topoisomerase two. Uh, that's the one that prevents supercoiling of DNA. So if you don't, if you inhibit that, you're going to get supercoiling, right? So it's going to destroy it. Uh, enzyme topoisomerase two DNA gyrus or topoisomerase four. It is bactericidal, and it must not be taken with antacid. Clinical use is gram-negative rods of urinary and GI tracts, including pseudomonas, some gram-positive organisms, otitis externa as well. Okay, so gram-negative of rods for urinary and GI tracts, including pseudomonas. Adverse effect is GI upset, superinfection, skin rashes, headache, dizziness, less commonly can cause lead cramps and myalgias. Contraindicated during pregnancy or breastfeeding and in children less than 18 years old due to possible damage to cartilage. Some may prolong QT interval. Mechanism of action is, oh sorry, may cause tendinitis and tendon rupture in people more than 60 years old and in patients taking prednisone. Ciprofloxacin inhibits cytochrome P450 Fluoroquinolones hurt attachments to your bones. Okay, so we don't give it in pregnancy and avoid in breastfeeding and in children of less than 18 year old. Why? Because it damages cartilage. Okay, and some may prolong QT into bones. Okay. Uh, mechanism of resistance, uh, chromosome encoded mutation in DNA gyres, plasmid mediated resistance, eclux pump. Deptomycin, uh, lipopeptide mechanism is lipopeptide uh, that disrupts cell membrane of gram positive cocci by creating transmembrane channels. Uh, clinical use is S. aureus skin infections, especially MRSA, bacteremia, infective endocarditis, and VRE. Uh, not used for pneumonia, avidly binds to and is inactivated by surfactant. Deptomyoskin is used for skin infections but can use can cause myopathy. So membrane integrity is right there. So it disrupts the cell membrane. Cell memories inside the cell wall. Okay. Uh, adverse effects is myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. Um, Metronidazole mechanism is forms toxic free radicals metabolites in the bacterial cell that damages DNA. Bacteria anti protozoal. Clinical use is uh, treats giardia, antamoeba, trichomonas, gardenella, vaginalis, and anaerobes. Bacteroids or C. Diff. So it can be used in place of moxicillin in H. pylori triple therapy in case of uh, penicillin allergy. Right. Uh, get gap on the metro with metronidazole. GRDI, antamoeba, trichomonas, cardinella, anaerobes. Treat anaerobic infection below the diaphragm versus clindamycin, which is above the diaphragm. Uh, adverse effect, disulfiram like reaction, severe flushing, tachycardia, hypotension with alcohol, headache, metallic taste. Okay. I'm just going through it because they rarely ask any of this stuff. Uh, what they ask is just this thing right here, like where does it attack or where does it attach? And for penicillin, the DLL and stuff 
and all that stuff and sometimes they ask uh, how would you expect it to get uh, resistant for that you can probably just figure out from looking at the answers like it would say uh, mutation in the strain or mutation in the cell wall or something like that usually that's the right answer so it's okay to if you don't remember everything in this just remember its mechanism of action or where at least it acts right like the topoisomerase one is important so remember that but that's about it because how much are can you remember like for clinical use you can't remember which bacteria is for which drug and all that right so remember the special ones like for MERS science uh, PRE okay so antimicrobial therapy that's going to be your RIP right uh, so for myobacterium tuberculosis rifampicin um, base regimen for three to four months it's RIP uh, I think it's uh, first two drugs for four months and then you do last or first four drugs for two months okay so that's usually the way you prescribe this uh, these drugs for TB, uh, rifampin and isoniazid. So that's gonna be your first two drugs for four months, and the last four is just all of them: rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol for two months. So rip for treatment. Uh, okay. Uh, myobacterium avium intracellular. You give uh, azithromycin or rifampicin azithromycin or clarithromycin plus ethambutol can add rifabutin or ciprofloxacin uh, M. leprae uh, you don't have anything for prophylaxis but for treatment long term treatment with Depson and rifampin and for tubercloid form add clofazimine uh, for lepromentous form okay uh, that was in the thing as well when we read about lepers. See, uh, microbacterial cell. So let's do this. Okay, so rifamycin. Uh, that's your rifampin. Uh, you also give it for prophylaxis in close contact, right? Rifamycin, rifampin, rifabutin, and rifapentine. Mechanism is uh, inhibit DNA dependent RNA polymerases. So, right there, you have RNA polymerase and it inhibits it. Uh, mRNA synthesis DNA dependent. Uh, then you have clinical use mycobacterium tuberculosis delayed resistance to Depson when used for leprosy uh, used for meningococcal prophylaxis and chemoprophylaxis in contacts with children with H influenza type B uh, this one's important uh, you use it with Depson to why would you give it with Depson that would be the question so it's because it delays resistance it's used for meningococcal prophylaxis. This one's not really asked, but just remember it. Uh, adverse effects, uh, minor hepatotoxicity and drug interactions increase in chromosome, cytochrome P450 uh, and orange body fluids, non-hazardous side effects, rifabutin favored over rifampin and 
patients with HIV infection due to less cytochrome P450 stimulation. Uh, mechanism of resistance is mutation reduce drug binding to RNA polymerase. Monotherapy rapidly leads to resistance. Rifampin is for Rs, RNA polymerase inhibitor. Uh, then ramps up microsomal cytochrome P450. Uh, this is uh, red orange body fluid. So if someone's being orange, it's a common side effect and it's safe. Uh, then rapid resistance in if used alone. So you can't use rifampin alone. Why? Because it causes resistance immediately, almost. So you give it with isoniazid rip. Uh, so mechanism is decreased synthesis of a myco mycolic acid, uh, bacterial catalase peroxide encoded with cat G uh, needed to convert isoniazid to active metallolite right? so it inhibits mycolic acid it decreases the synthesis of mycolic acid uh, bacterial catalase peroxide encoded by cat G needed to convert so you need catalase positive uh, bacteria I mean peroxide basically so they might say that uh, they gave isoniazid uh, and but then uh, it didn't work why it's because the bacteria is uh, catalase positive uh, negative it doesn't have catalase anymore so that's why this doesn't function properly then in a research it's always going to be in a research these kind of questions uh, clinical use myobacterium tuberculosis also used as monotherapy for latent latent uh, TB. Different isoniazid have half-lives in fast versus slow isolators. Uh, adverse effects, hepatotoxicity, cytochrome P450 inhibition drug induced SLE, anion gap metabolic acidosis, vitamin B6 deficiency, peripheral neuropathy, sideroblastic anemia, seizures in high dose, refractory to benzodiazepines uh, administered with pyridoxine B6. Isoniazid, uh, INH, uh, injury, injures neurons and hepatocytes. Okay, so it's hepatotoxic and bad. Mechanism of action is mutations that lead, mutations leading to underexpression of CAT G. Right, so CAT G is the one that provides the catalase peroxidase, which is needed to convert. Uh, isoniazid to active metabolites. Pyrazinamide uh, mechanism is uh, mechanism uncertain. Works best at acidic pH. I like that. It's uncertain, so you don't need to know. They won't ask you about it either. So. For example, in host spectralisosome, clinical use is microbiome TB. Uh, adverse is hyperuricemia and hepatotoxicity. Ethambutol. Ethambutol, you remember, I remember it like uh, there was Ethan uh, in Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise, and he went to, he went to uh, Arab, uh, Saudi Arabia, right? So Arab. Uh, so that's where this one goes in arabino galactans right so mechanism action is it decreases uh, carbohydrate polymerization of myobacterium cell wall by blocking arabinocyl transferase there you go so it has arab in it and ethan in mission impossible goes to arab uh, clinical use is mycobacterium tuberculosis adverse effects is optic neuropathy uh, so that's uh, important red green color blindness usually reversible pronounced mutal. then you have streptomycin uh, mechanism interferes with 30s component of ribosome uh, clinical use is mycobacterium tuberculosis and second line adverse effect is tetanus uh, vertigo 
ataxia and nephrotoxicity. Okay, so you have carnosinamide that doesn't have it. You have mRNA synthesis, uh, DNA dependent RNA polymerase uh, that's rifambutin and rifampin inhibiting RNA polymerase inside the cell. Uh, for mycolic acid, you have isoniazid that uh, decreases the formation of this, and then you have ethambutol that does this right? in the RF collectica. That does that. Uh, we have like six more pages to go. Uh, so I'll take the break here and we'll come back in like five to ten minutes. Just finished that. And now we're on antimicrobial prophylaxis, uh, clinical scenario, and medication. So you get exposure to meningococcal infection uh, you give ceftriaxone ciprofloxacin or rifampin uh, high risk for infective endocarditis and undergoing surgical or dental procedures you give amox uh, history of recurrent utis tmp smx uh, that's what we give and you have malaria prophylaxis for travelers uh, etoquone progonel mefloquine, doxycycline, premaquine, or, or uh, chloroquine, at least for areas with sensitive species, that's Mexico and Argentina, you can use this, but anywhere else you give one of these. And you give primaquine for hypnozoids. Um, but for that you check for G6PD first. Uh, pregnant pre patients uh, carrying Group B strip, uh, you give intrapartum penicillin G or ampicillin, right? That's uh, Streptococcus agalic T. Uh, prevention of conococcal conjunctivitis in newborn, erythromycin ointment on eye, uh, very important, it prevents blindness. Uh, prevention of post surgical infection due to S. aureus, you give cefazoline, right? Uh, that's first generation. Vancomycin if positive for MRSA. Prophylaxis for strep pharyngitis in child with prior rheumatic fever. Uh, Benzetine penicillin G or oral penicillin V. Prophylaxis in HIV infection and AIDS. Cell count uh, prophylaxis in infection. So. Cell count CD4 less than 200, uh, you give TMPX, I mean TMP and SMX uh, for pneumocystis pneumonia and even for same thing for CD count, CD4 count less than 100 for pneumocystis pneumonia and toxoplasmosis. Antifungal therapy is Lenosterol synthesis, uh, argosterol synthesis, cell wall synthesis, cell membrane integrity, and nuclear acid synthesis. This is what we can attack. With the help of drugs. So which one is first? Okay, amphotericin B. Uh, amphotericin B is it binds to ergosterol, so that's ergosterol is right there. So it binds to ergosterol, unique to fungi, forms membrane pores that allow leakage of electrolytes. Amphotericin tears holes in the fungal membrane by forming pores. Clinical use, serious systemic mycosis, cryptococcus, uh, amphotericin B, with or without flu cytosine, for cryptococcal meningitis, blastomyces, uh, coccidiates, uh, histoplasma, candida, mucor, intrathecally for coccidial meningitis. So basically for all the fungal you can think of, for systemic mycosis, you give this. Supplement uh, potassium and magnesium because of altered renal tubule permeability. permeability. I said that weird, didn't I? 
I'm not going to attempt it again. Uh, adverse effect, fever, chills, shake and bake, hypertension, nephrotoxicity, arrhythmias, anemias, and IV phlebitis. So it's a lot. For shake and bake, you can just think. M four 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 four, so it's like M four 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 terracin. So you know how you say it when you're shaking, like that. So fever and chills, and then there is M flow terracin because it flows through nephrons, and then it's M four terrible because it's, you know, it causes causes nephrotoxicity, arrhythmias, anemias, and phlebitis. So. Uh, hydration decreases nephrotoxicity and liposomal amphotericin decreases toxicity. Okay. Uh, neostatin. This is uh, the mechanism is same as amphotericin B, topical use only as too toxic for systemic use. Uh, this is the one they use in that uh, their Martin, right? So that was vancomycin, neostatin, and it was one more thing, two gram gram negatives or gram positive. Uh, okay, so Clinical uses swish and swallow for oral candidiasis or oral thrush. Topical for diaper rash or vaginal candidiasis. Flu cytosine mechanism is it inhibits, it inhibits uh, DNA and RNA biosynthesis by conversion to 5 fluorouracil by cytosine deaminase. Clinical uses systemic fungal infections, especially meningitis caused by cryptococcus in combination with amphotericin B. Adverse effect is myelosuppression. Azoles, uh, clotrimazole, fluconazole, azavuconazole, itraconazole, ketoconazole, miconazole, and vorico voriconazole. Mechanism inhibit uh, fungal sterol synthesis by inhibiting the cytochrome P450 enzyme that converts lenosterol to ergosterol. Right here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, right there. So, uh, clinical use is local and less serious systemic mycosis, fluconazole for chronic suppression of cryptococcal meningitis in patients living with HIV and candidal infection of all types. Itraconazole may be used for blastomyces, coccidiates. Uh, histoplasma, sporthrix, and syncshi. Sporthrix, syncshi. That's the gardener's or rose thorn infection causing bacteria. Uh, Clotrimazole and miconazole for topical fungal infection. Voriconazole for aspergillus and some candida. Isabuconazole for serious aspergillus and mucor infections. Adverse effects testos uh, testosterone synthesis inhibition, gynecomastia, especially with ketoconazole. Liver dysfunction inhibits cytochrome P450QT interval prolongation. Terabinophen is, uh, it inhibits the fungal enzyme sequelin epoxide, so right there. Uh, clinical uses dermatophytes, especially oncomycosis, uh, fungal infection, or finger or toenail. On right. adverse effects is GI upset, headache, hepatotoxicity, and taste disturbance. For this one, just know this diagram. That's basically what they ask. This one causes pores, right? So, polines or amphotericin B or niacin. Does that uh, flu 
cytosine nucleic acid synthesis it affects that uh, this one affects the cell wall this one affects the formation of ergosterol right? and this one for lenosterol terpenophen uh, all the inner details are not really you're not going to remember it uh, unless you go over it and memorize each and everything that's going to take time and it's not asked too much so yeah echinocanidans uh anidulafin can uh caspofugin and micofugin that it inhibits cell wall synthesis by inhibiting synthesis of beta glycan uh, clinical use of invasive aspergillosis candida adverse effect is gi upset flushing by histamine release gracio fulmin uh, mechanism interferes with microtubule function, disrupts mitosis, dis deposits in keratin containing tissues like nails. Clinical use is oral treatment of superficial infections, uh, inhibits growth of dermatophytes, tinea, ringworm. Adverse effects teratogenic, carcinogenic. Confusion, headache, disulfiram-like reaction, increase in cytochrome P450, and warfarin metabolism. Antiprotozoal therapy, pyrimethamine, toxoplasmosis, ceramin, melarsopro, trypsinosome, brucey, nefertimox, t sodium stibogluconate, leishmaniasis. Antimite and louse therapy, permethrin, melathion, Acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, topical or oral, ivermectin used to treat scabies and lice. Right, so remember that for at least scabies. That's important. And then melatonin, topical or oral, ivermectin. Ivermectin was used for river blindness disease as well. Chloroquine, uh, we know enough about that already. Uh, blocks detoxification of heme and hemozoin. Heme uh, accumulates and is toxic to plasmodia. Treatment of plasmodia species other than P. falciparum. Frequency of resistance in P. falciparum is too high. Resistance due to membrane pump that in decreases intracellular concentration of drug. Treat P. falciparum with artemitor or lumefentrine or articunan. Adavoquinone. Or proguanil for file threatening malaria. Use quinidine in US, quinidine elsewhere. Quinidine in US, quinine elsewhere, sorry. Or artisunate. Uh, so it's always going to be someone who travels somewhere else and then came back and has malaria. So you use these. Uh, adverse effects retinopathy dependent on clumidive. Cumulative uh, dose, pruritus, especially in dark-skinned individuals. Okay, so chloroquine causes this in this. Antihelminthic therapy, uh, that's parenteral pemoid, ivermectin, mebendazole. This is a microtubule inhibitor to treat bendy worms. Uh, Prezequental increases calcium permeability and increases vacuolization. Diethyl carbamazepine. Okay, uh, three more pages. Four. Uh, so antiviral therapy and other antiviral therapy so oseltamivir and xenomivir so that's right there Let's do this one. here we have a virus coming in binding to the receptor then there is endocytosis uh, then it releases the nucleic, uh, the nucleic muscle uh, matter or things, and then 
that gets replicated and then there's protein synthesis because of it and then it goes back into a capsid or whatever and then it gets released out okay so oseltamivir is this one uh, it's the neuromanidase inhibitor okay uh, remember uh, hemagglutinin and in okay, brings in the or provides entry into the cell and neuromanidase uh, it promotes progeny release right so that's what this is going to inhibit so acetamivir and zanamivir mechanism is it inhibits influenza neuromanidase so it decreases release of progeny virus clinical use is treatment and prevention of influenza a and b beginning therapy within 48 hours of symptom onset may is shortened during all dura short duration of illness Veloxavir inhibits the cap snatching transfer of 5' cap from cell mRNA onto viral mRNA and on nuclease activity of the influenza virus RNA polymerase which leads to decrease in viral replication. Uh, clinical use is treatment within 48 hours of symptom onset shortens duration of the illness. Great. So that's the endonuclease inhibitor Veloxavir for influenza virus. Remdesivir uh, mechanism is prodrug of an ATP analog. The active metabolite inhibits viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase and evades proofreading by viral exoribonuclease. Uh, it decreases viral RNA production. Clinical use is certainly approved for treatment of COVID 19 requiring hospitalization. hospitalization right so it's uh, approved for COVID-19 that's the main thing there acyclovir femcyclovir and velocyclovir mechanism is guanosine analogs monophosphorylated by uh, HSV or VZV uh, thymidine kinase and not phosphorylated in an unaffected cells Few adverse effects. Triphosphate formed by cellular enzymes preferentially inhibits viral DNA polymerase by chain termination. Clinical use is no activity against uh, CMV because CMV lacks the thymidine kinase necessary to activate guanosine analogs. Uh, used for herpes simplex, uh, yeah, herpes simplex virus induced mucocutaneous and genital lesions as well as for encephalitis prophylaxis in patients who are immunocompromised also used as prophylaxis for immunocompetent patients with severe or recurrent infection no effect on latent form of HSV and VZV velocyclovir or velocyclovir a pro drug of acyclovir has better over viability for herpes zoister use femcyclovir right so we did that and we did that we're going to dice um, again cyclovir so all of this uh, just inhibits uh, replication primarily right it's either that or uh, inhibit release of progeny it's one or the other uh, and for release of progeny is also tamivir and zanamivir so everything else just prevents replication somehow okay again cyclovir is guanosine analog 5 prime monophosphate formed by uh, cmv viral kinase triphosphate formed by cellular kinases preferentially inhibits viral dna polymerase Uh, clinical use is CMV, especially in patients who are immunocompromised. 
well against Cyclovir, a uh, pro drug against Cyclovir has better overall bioavailability. Adverse effect is myelosuppression, like, so you can get leukopenia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, renal toxicity. It's more toxic to host enzymes than acyclovir. Mechanism of resistance is mutated viral kinase. Phoscarnate mechanism is viral DNA, RNA, polymerase inhibitor, and HIV tr reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Binds to pyrophosphate binding site of enzyme does not require any kinase activation. Clinical use is CMV retinitis and immunocompromised patients with gancyclovir fail when gancyclovir will mere fails. Acyclovir resistant uh, HSV, adverse effects, neuronephrotoxicity, multiple electrolyte abnormalities can lead to seizures. Mechanism of resistance is mutated DNA polymerase, Cetophobia uh, is mechanism is preferentially inhibits viral DNA polymerase. Uh, does not require phosphorylation by viral kinase. Clinical use is CMV retinitis in immunocompromised patients, acyclovir resistant HSV, long half life, adverse effect is nephrotoxicity, co administered with cetophobia and with probenicid and IV saline to decrease toxicity. Okay, now we're gonna do the HIV therapy. So, let's go there. HIV therapy, antiretroviral therapy or ARP therapy, often initiated at the time of HIV diagnosis. Strongest indication for use with patients presenting with AIDS defining illness, low CD4 cell counts, uh, less than 500 cells per millimeter cube, or high viral count, viral load. Right? Uh, regimen consists of three drugs to prevent resistance to NRTIs and preferably an integrase inhibitor. That's how uh, you prescribe that. Most ARTs are active against both HIV-1 and HIV-2. Exceptions are NNRTIs and and furtide, not effective against HIV-2. Okay. So NRTIs. These are your abacavir, amtricitabine, lumavudine, tenofovir, zidovudine, and formerly known as CDT. Tenofovir may cause damage to the proximal tubule of the kidney, leading to acute kidney injury and or uh, proximal tubule impairment. So the biopsy for that will cause, have normal glomerulus and renal interstitium, but damage to proximal tubule. Okay, that's important for tenofovir. So NRTIs, they prevent the formation of 3' to 5' phosphodiesterase bond. Uh, so competitively, in, the mechanism is competitively inhibit nucleotide binding to reverse transcriptase. So the reverse transcriptase is going to inhibit that, so the binding to and terminate the DNA chain. So it lack a three prime OH group. Tenophobia is a nucleotide. The others are nucleosides. All need to be phosphorylated to be active. 
Acetabutene uh, can be caused, um, can be used for general prophylaxis and during pregnancy to decrease the risk of fetal transmission. Have you dined with my nuclear family? Nuclear side. Okay. Uh, myelosuppression can be reversed. Uh, myelosuppression can be reversed with granulocyte colony stimulating factor, GCSF and erythropoietin nephrotoxicity, avicovir, contraindicated if patients have if the patient has HLA-B uh, mutation due to increased risk of hypersensitivity. Right. So for zirobudine, uh, you have get zits of the hemoglobin. Because right. it causes anemia and lactic acidosis and peripheral neuropathy. But that's just normal for all of them, right? Um, but for zetoidine, that's anemia, so it gets it out hemoglobin. Uh, and in RTIs, it's F over rings and neviparins, so it's BI and VI for that. So by it binds to reverse transcriptase at the site different from NRTIs. Do not require phosphorylation to be active or compete with nucleotides. Rash and hepatotoxicity are common to all NNRTIs. So these are, uh, these cause vivid dreams and CNS symptoms, which are common with F ovarians. Okay, so that is right there, right here. Uh, integrase or Tegra is the one you had to focus on. So by Dulo LV and Rel Tegra here. What does it do? It inhibits HIV genome integration into the host cell chromosome by reversibly inhibiting HIV integrase. Increase creating kinase and weight gain. Uh, protease, so over here, this, this thing integrates right there. So Tegra inhibits uh, HIV genome integration uh, by reversibly inhibiting the integrase. It's an easy one to remember because of the name. Uh, the protease inhibitors are the Navier's. So you never tease a protease. Navier tease a protease. Assembly of neuron depends on HIV-1 protease or polygene which cleaves the polypeptide pr uh, products of HIV mRNA into their functional parts uh, right so it had protease integrase and reverse transcriptase these three things were part of that mRNA into their functional part thus protease inhibitors prevent mature maturation of new viruses hyperglycemia GI intolerance nausea diarrhea Rifampin, potent, uh, cytochrome P or UGT inducer. Decrease in protease inhibitor concentration and use, then you use uh, rifabutin instead. Uh, Ritonavir, uh, cytochrome P450 inhibitor, increases other drug concentration. Entry inhibitor, right, so that's going to be your uh, GP41, right. And this one was the docking one. So, and third of it here is it binds to GP41, inhibiting viral entry, skin reaction at injection sites. Uh, and ferroptide inhibits fusion. Okay. And Meravi Rock. Meravi Rock. Bind CCR5 on surface of uh, T cells and monocytes, inhibiting interaction with the docking one, so GP120. Meraviroc inhibits docking. Okay. 
um, pre-exposure prophylaxis, so administered to patients with a negative HIV test, normal renal function, and any of the following indication. Men who have sex with men without protection, sexual activity with HIV positive partner, or multiple partners of unknown HIV status, injection drug use with high risk needle behavior, treatment is tenofovir uh, with emtericitabine. Counsel on adherence and risk reduction with follow-up HIV testing every three months. Um, that takes care of all of that, I think. Okay, uh, now we are on hepatitis C therapy. So for hepatitis C, uh, chronic H uh, hep C virus infection treated with multidrug therapy that targets specific steps within uh, hep C replication cycle. So this is hep C virus and coded proteins. Example of drugs are provided. Uh, drugs mechanism toxicity. So now we're going to NS5A, NS5B, NS3OA, and alternative drugs. Uh, the 5A has all the Asvir, and the B has Buvir, and number four, three and four have Previr. Okay, so anything that has Asvir, it inhibits the NS5A. I have a diagram for this, give me a second. Hep C, uh, NS5A, so what does that do, right? That's right here, Lidip severe, so, right? It affects, uh, so, okay, so Hep C, what it does, the steps for Hep C is against the viral entry, and then second step is fusion and coding, and then the third step is translation and replication, and the fourth is vir viron assembly, and then the release, right? So, what this one does, NS5A inhibitor, is it inhibits the NS5A, a viral phosphoprotein that plays a key role in RNA replication. So it stops replication right there. Uh, exit mechanism is unknown. Uh, toxicity is headache and diarrhea. Uh, NS5B, uh, it inhibits NS5B, uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase acting as a chain terminator. Right, so that's this thing. Uh, so for sub here. So first comes the A, then comes the B, and pre comes before everything. Right, because it's previer. So previer, previer will be before uh, A and B. Okay, so it inhibits NS5B and RNA dependent RNA polymerase acting as a chain terminator. Uh, prevents viral RNA replication. Fatigue and headache is the toxicity. NS34A and inhibitor. That's your previers. Uh, Previer will be in it inhibits the NS3 and 4A of viral protease preventing viral replication. Okay, same thing as NS5. So Grezoprevir, headache, fatigue, semiprevir, 
photosensitivity, reaction, and rash. Alternate drugs are ribavirin. Uh, ribavirin does what? It inhibits synthesis of guanine nucleotide by competitively inhibiting IMP dehydrogenase. It's used as adjuvant, adjunct in case refractory to newer medication. Hemolytic anemia and severe teratogen though. Ribavirin. So inhibits IMP dehydrogenase. That's the one that makes uh, guanine and adenine, right? Nucleotides. Okay, disinfection and sterilization. Goals include to, uh, the reduction of pathogenic organism ca counts to safe levels. That's called disinfection. And the inactivation of all microbes, including spores, is called sterilization. Uh, chlorine and heat are sporocetal. Autoclave, uh, A-E-H, okay, heat. Okay, so heat, A is for autoclave, E is for ethylene oxide, and H is hydrogen peroxide. Okay, not heat, heat, but like H-E-A-T. Okay, so chlorine and uh, this. Autoclave pressurized system at uh, more than 120 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes is sporocytal. May not reliably inactive prions though. Uh, alcohols denurture uh, proteins and disrupt cell membrane. It's not uh, sporocytal. Chlorhexidine disrupts cell membrane and coagulates intracellular components, oxidizes and denurtures uh, proteins, sporocytal. Uh, ethylene oxide alkylating agent sporocytal hydrogen peroxide free radical oxidation and sporocytal again iodine and iodophores halogenation of dna rna and proteins may be sporocytal as well and quaternary amides impair permeability of cell membranes but not sporocytal so which one is sporocytal it's hydrogen peroxide ethylene oxide, chlorine, and autoclave, okay? And it's important to remember, you need to keep it more than 120 degrees Celsius, uh, but you can still have prions on the instruments. It's not gonna take care of that. Okay. Antimicrobial to avoid uh, microbials to avoid in pregnancy. Antimicrobials are sulfonamides because uh, it causes carnicteris, uh, amino glycosides, it causes autotoxicity, uh, fluoroquinolones for cartilage damage, clarithromycin is embryotoxic, tetracycline is discolored teeth, inhibition of bone growth. Ribavirin is teratogenic, so is griseofulvin, and chloramphenicol is important because it causes gray baby syndrome. So safe children take really good care. And that's it. We're done. Micro. Thanks for holding it out with me. <laughs>